Great, welcome everyone. Uh, from Colorado APA 2022 it is our town hall and annual meeting. And um, once again, this year we're doing it virtually. So thank you for joining us if you were able. We're gonna spend some time today going through uh, all of our different boards, committees. You'll meet most of the board members who are on the call today. Um, and we hope that this gives you an opportunity to think about how you might wanna participate, volunteer, or join us um, on the board. So here's a look at the agenda today. It looks longer and lengthier than it really will be. So hang tight, it'll be fine. Um, and everybody has a little bit to share about their different uh, job here at the at APA Colorado. So first let's start with introductions of our chapter board. So my name is Joni. I am the current chapter president and starting next January, Maureen, who has just also come on camera, is the president-elect and she'll be taking the handoff from me to become the APA president in January, 2023. Thanks for joining us, Maureen. Thank you. And thank you for taking over, very important. <laughs> So I'm not gonna go through everyone's name, but we wanted to make sure that we had a photo so that you could identify each of the folks and you'll see their photos again today as we go through each of their areas um, and what they do. And most of these folks are here today and we'll be presenting a little bit for you. We do have some new members of the board who just came on in 2022. And we'll also have some outgoing board members as you see here. So these are folks that have served the board and have completed their term. We also have several vacancies on the board. We have a public official representative, um, al an allied organizational representative, and then the seats that are gonna be up for election um, when the election, I think that goes out in August. Um, and so those seats are up. So if any of you out there are interested in running for any of those positions, please let us know and we'd love to get your name on the ballot. All right, so as I said, I'm Joni, this is my horse Dagan. I'm actually in Tucson right now at a horse show, so um, that's why I'm in a hotel room and it's weird. Um, <laughs> one of the jobs um, that we have here at the board is to make sure that we're taking a look at our mission statement and our goals. We do submit an annual report to APA National every year along with our financial statements. And so this year in June, the board got together and took a look at the current um, goals and our strategies. And, and this is really a great uh, visual, um, which is also on the website. Um, part of that then leads into our development plan. And we have um, seven, six main strategies. And then we have a bunch of action items tied to those strategies with assignments um, for boards and committees. I'd encourage you to go online and take a look at this. And if you're interested in having this emailed to you, we can do that as well. And with that, I'll turn it over to Maureen. Um, as Joni mentioned, I'm president-elect and um, I'm a transportation planner involved in long and short range transportation and environmental planning, um, often supported by modeling and analytics. And um, I've been involved in the chapter previously as the South Central Area Representative for a couple of terms. And um, during that, I volunteered as the membership committee chair, um, volunteered for the PIC board, and I'm the president now. I've done two cycles of FI, FAICP nomination committee and two cycles of scoring Colorado Great Places awards. Um, also engaged with some of our partner organizations. And my primary goal is going to be to help Joni and really to learn what I need to do. But aside from that, to promote um, chapter involvement in community building roles and advance the development plan and action plan implementation, expand chapter-based professional development opportunities as well. And my email is listed on the slide and feel free to contact me. Um, I'd love your suggestions. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Josh Olava. I am your treasurer for APA Colorado. Um, I wanted to highlight some of our 2021 accomplishments. 
Um, you know, we worked with the budget committee and board, uh, really established a great budget um, before 2021, even despite some of the uncertainties, um, you know, with COVID and everything going on there. Um, some other treasure specific items as we completed the quarterly reviews of the budget. Um, you know, that's something we started a couple of years ago is to complete those quarterly reviews so that way we could continue to just watch how the budget's progressing, especially as we get closer to the fall when we have our great annual conference and make sure that we can provide all the services and opportunities for our members. Um, and then big accomplishment for the end of the year, um, now two years running as we ended the year under budget and with a net revenue. So that was very exciting. Um, and my kind of personality is I kind of do a little bit more than just the treasure specific roles and tasks. And I enjoy getting involved with all the other committees. And as treasurer, you kind of wear multiple hats. Um, so I work with the conference planning committee and staff um, on, again, the annual Colorado planning conference. Um, I really enjoy working with the professional development committee. That's something I've done for 10 years now, I believe. Um, and it's been exciting to be involved with that, to come up with new ways to create some exciting and engaging sessions at the conference um, for our members and, and kind of thinking outside the box of what, what can we do at a conference and how can we get members involved in part of the discussions. Um, the other thing I've done is work closely with um, our professional development officer, Aaron, who you'll hear from a little bit later. Uh, we've been kind of facilitating mentorship requests and helping mentor young professionals and young planners and students uh, coming into the profession. So that's something we've kind of taken on and continue to try to build that idea of a mentorship program, working with various committees and groups. Um, and then the last thing uh, for 2021 was facilitating a youth discussion at the annual planning conference in uh, this past fall. And that really was exciting because it got a lot of planners interested and excited on what we could do to help engage with youth, educate youth on what planning is. And so that is turning into a 2022 project partnering with the Youth and Planning Committee. Let's see, next slide. There we are. Um, so it's kind of fun to see the numbers uh, from 2021. Here you can see our profits based on the income and expenses, and you can see the general income areas. The conference is always a big income generator, but then on the, the flip side, it's also one of our biggest expenses. We always try to look for ways to maximize members' uh, registrations and everything like that to provide the best services and events at the conference. Um, next slide, please. So I wanted to throw together a five-year financial comparison. So this looks all the way back to 2017. And what you'll know with 2022, that's based on our current budget, and it will continue to adjust throughout the year as we do the quarterly check-ins and the state of COVID and everything like that changes. Um, the reason we're anticipating a slight decrease um, or a, a loss there is due to additional travel opportunities with the president and professional development officer going to the national conferences as well as staff, and then also various legislative events that involve travel. So um, some of those upticks we have to account for and start to balance back into the budget like we had back in 2019 and prior. So, um, so far so good and definitely kind of in the right track. We usually like to make sure that year to year we're not, we're not going to a negative below, you know, 15, because that's usually something we can adjust throughout the year and make up and try and get pretty close to an even uh, budget. Next slide, please. So some 2022 goals. Um, as exciting as it sounds, we are hoping to do a financial audit here early in the year. That's something we're going to get started on, uh, having conversations about that in the next couple months. Um, this will really help us have tools and strategies and understand how we're managing our finances as a chapter and really help us move forward. Um, the other side of it is the quarterly budget reviews, as I've discussed, you know, keeping that trend going, that's been very successful for us. And it really helps the board to see how finances are being um, used throughout the year and how we can approve various partnerships or sponsorships uh, with, our, with our partners that we work with. Um, you know, I look forward to supporting our area reps and committees, you know, on the budget request and seeing what we can do with the numbers because 
they have a lot of great activities and initiatives that they're getting started with. And uh, it's exciting to talk to those groups and see what they have coming. So uh, keep, an, keep an eye out for them, and I'm sure you'll hear more from them a little bit later. Um, and as I mentioned with some of my 2021 highlights and accomplishments, you know, continuing the conference planning committee and professional de development committee work, the logistics that go into that, um, you know, I, I enjoy doing the mentoring, so I'm going to continue to do that and work with the professional development committee and really working on this youth education engagement toolkit that is part of our development plan, working again closely with the youth and planning committee and chair. And then, you know, the goal is at the end of this year to create a sound 2023 chapter budget to kind of usher in the new year, kind of on the right track. So I uh, look forward to any questions anyone has later on or feel free to reach out to me treasure at apacolorado.org. Um, and again, you know, glad everyone's here and look forward to a great 2022. Thanks, Josh. Um, I'll go ahead and start with the legislative committee update. And with the committee, there are three of us. And I think today you're only going to hear from me just to kind of be a little bit quick and Saul unfortunately wasn't able to make it he's busy at the Capitol but my name is Shayla Liphart I'm the Legislative Affairs Representative and Legislative Committee Co-Chair and Scott Bressler is also our Legislative Committee Co-Chair we work together really closely to try and make sure that we're thinking about legislative activity and it moves really quick through the session so it really does take a team um, <laughs> to make sure that APA's interests are being represented. Um, next slide. And so the legislative committee's primary focus is to advocate for good planning po policies that support our communities across the state. To do that, we track what's moving through the legislature. Um, sometimes we'll run our own legislation. We provide comments on legislation, we testify, and you know, we officially support or oppose um, specific pieces of legislation on behalf of APA Colorado. Some years are more active than others, but overall APA Colorado follows a high number of bills for a committee um, and for an organization of our size. Last year, we followed and discussed 56 different bills and we officially supported th 33 of them. Um, and we had an active role in commenting and testifying uh, for the transportation bill that passed specifically. That was definitely a, an interesting process and we were brought in a little bit more in the stakeholder part of that, which was really fantastic for the organization. Um, you can see that the topic of bills vary widely and we try to make an effort to be comprehensive in following any bill that has a direct planning link. We really expect to see a lot of variation this legislation, this legislative session as well. Um, but we're anticipating perhaps seeing even more on the water and affordable housing side. Uh, next slide. Oops. Um, so we do more than follow bills within the committee. Uh, this coming year, we're really making a focused effort to provide more comments and testimony on bills and then also to really continue to build direct relationships with our legislators. Our lobbyist, Saul, has really great relationships across the Capitol, and he's helping us to build on um, and really establish ourselves and relationships directly with legislators, too. And that not only elevates APA Colorado, um, but helps him do his job uh, even more effectively, too. And so we also wanna do more events in partnership with committees. Um, every year we do a planner's day at the Capitol, which we'd encourage everyone to attend. We think it's a pretty great event, but there are a lot of opportunities to do more events, especially with the wide range of great committees that we have. And we also wanna think about starting to host um, tours this summer with legislators. So opportunities to get legislators out in communities talking with planners about you know what we're seeing what works and what we need from them and then we know that a lot happens in a short amount of time so this year we also have a goal to um, help keep you more up to date and providing more information on the website as well as building a story bank um, to help us communicate better so not only 
communicate better with um, our legislators and our lobbyists and our committee, but also with all of our members. And with that, I will hand it over to the next person. Hello. Um, my name is Julia Puster. I serve as the Vice President of External Affairs for APA Colorado. Um, as the VP of, of External Affairs, I try to um, engage with our professional partners and organizations and have that interaction between those organizations and our membership and vice versa. Um, as part of that, a lot of what we do is media outreach um, and communications with those partner organizations in our membership. And as such, I co-chair um, the Outreach and Communication Committee, as well as the um, Awards Committee. Um, so I co-chair the Outreach and Communication Committee with um, Mike Telka, who you'll see in a moment. Um, and so we've been trying to, again, increase our social presence um, through our media, um, with that committee and, and he'll talk a little bit about that more in our presentation as we get into our committee. Um, as, and then also with the awards committee, we've tried to enhance our videos with our award winners through APA Colorado. Um, so not just recognizing them in person at our annual um, conferences, but also via video and then posting those videos um, via social media so that our membership is aware of it that couldn't attend the, the conference. Um, our partners and, and others on social media are also aware of that and um, the award winners can push that out as well. Goals that we're looking at doing here um, are again looking at more ways to get the APA's message out there. Um, we've got some exciting things that we'll talk about in this um, presentation about um, some diverse and interesting podcasts through our Outreach and Communication Committee um, and our continued in increased uh, social media outreach. Um, I'm looking at seeking opportunities to outreach to our memberships, our members, um, and work with our partner organizations on education and networking events and providing more support to our membership, um, letting people know how to get involved with APA and assisting our regional represent, re representatives in highlighting um, the projects in their region, as well as the events that they have planned. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mike Tilka. I'm the Vice President of Communications and I work hand in hand with uh, Julia. So in 2021, we were still dealing with COVID. So we did maintain what we've done traditionally and send out uh, bi-monthly newsletters. So we did that. We're always looking for any interested parties to submit newsletters, topics, even if it's uh, something you're just interested in, we can always post it through social media, through other means. So we're always looking for people to get out there and uh, to communicate with their uh, fellow planning professionals. Uh, with that said, we, we spent a lot of time this past year uh, working with the Outreach and Communications Committee and trying to think of ways outside of our traditional boxes to expand interest and engagement. So looking at moving into 2022 on the next slide, uh, the big item that we came up with that I've been working on is getting a podcast out there. Uh, so at the end of last year, we finalized our episode count and I've been working to get the speakers lined up for each of these topics. We're just about there. And our first recording session has finally been scheduled. So looking forward to uh, publishing a release date for those episodes in the coming months here. And then moving on to the newsletters for this year, uh, we had a good participation on our climate. We had articles coming out of Brighton and Breckenridge uh, dealing with climate and sustainability and what local municipalities can do. I um, urge you to look at those articles and uh, think critically about what your organization can do. Those can be accessed off of our website and you probably received them via email as well. If you're interested in any of our upcoming topics, uh, please reach out to me directly. And those are housing, politics of planning, legislative updates, energy, transportation. And at the end of the year, we do a full awards packet. So I urge you, and I know others will later on this call, 
to submit for awards. So thank you for your time and I'll be back a few slides later. Thank you. Hi, so I'm not Manish, but I am going to be presenting for him. He owes me one. Um, he is the faculty representative currently and has been, I believe, since 2019. Um, he um, is working right now on a survey that I'll talk about in a little bit when we talk about our equity, diversity, and inclusion group. Um, he's an assistant professor um, right now in the Department of Urban and Regional Planning. Um, and um, they have a lot on their schedule this year, but the survey, he has a research assistant, assistant helping him with the survey currently. Um, so he's at CU Denver, he's the APA Colorado liaison. The survey is a huge deal for us this year in EDI. Um, and he's also a committee member, but he also got um, co-chair this year with myself. So he's gonna be working a lot harder um, in the um, kind of on the survey piece of it. Um, and I'll be kind of the face and communications on that side of it. So, um, so the EDI survey report is, a, as I've said, is a huge focus of his. Um, he's wrapping up the report this year. We're looking to try and do two to three identified actions so we can really focus our efforts and, and hopefully get some success on whatever it, the actions are that we identify to, to move forward with. Um, we are working um, as a committee to address issues surrounding equity, diversity, and inclusion. And one of our, our biggest pushes right now is to, to, uh, to gain some baseline information on where we're at with equity, diversity, and inclusion um, as planners in our own profession here in Colorado. We did get some survey results that also kind of go a little bit beyond that, which is also a good baseline of information for us. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Truckee. I'm the representative for the Central Mountain Region. And uh, I wanna talk a little bit about some of our 2021 accomplishments. Um, all right, one of the big things we did was for the area is a housing tour in Breckenridge back in October where we had about 20 planners come from Front Range and from Central Mountain Region. We were able to go over a number of workforce housing projects that the town has constructed recently or are under construction at this point in time. The town of Breckenridge has been pretty aggressive about our workforce housing. Um, obviously, there's a huge need for it in all communities and it's very cute here in the mountain towns. Um, so we've got um, over 1,100 deed restricted units right now, but there's also a needs assessment that see, it says we need another 1,200 um, in, in the next couple of years, which um, is quite the target for us to work on. So we were able to bring the planners together and show them a number of the projects. The one in the screen right here is our Blue 52 project that was finished a couple of years ago, along with a great park that was partially funded through GOCO dollars that we were able to um, uh, put with, you know, bring, bring that community together to have a park right next to it and a bridge going over the river to the rec path. So anyway, um, in addition to the to actually touring the sites, we we're able to talk with the planners about a number of the programs that uh, the town has undertaken in recent years. Our housing helps program um, is really one where we give people free money, essentially, if they'll be willing to put a deed restriction voluntarily on their property that limits it to being occupied by local workforce. Um, to the tune of about 15% of the sales value um, of a home. And, um, you know, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's, it's a much easier way to get a deed restriction than constructing brand new homes. So we're really all about um, pursuing that program as much as we can to maintain our existing inventory of housing that's out there, um, which unfortunately we are losing to different forces like short-term rentals or uh, people moving into the community and working remotely. Um, we also have a buy down program, which certain does the same thing to a certain extent. We buy um, when units become available on the market, we'll buy them, we'll put a deed restriction on them, and then we sell them at a reduced price. And most recently, there's a lease to locals program we've kicked off, which 
incentivizes people that have short-term rentals to instead um, do a long-term uh, rental lease. And um, so anyway, we went over those items with in the housing tour, and I think it was pretty well received by the group that showed up for that. Um, we also hosted the fall um, APA conference at Keystone. It was great for the first time in several years to be meeting back in person again. And I think everyone really enjoyed the conference that was able to attend. Um, so for this year, goals are going to be to I'm going to do some outreach to the Central Mountain members. We'd really like to hear your ideas on issues and hot topics that you might want to um, do a tour of, some type of um, gathering networking event where we could uh, get together and talk about what um, those issues and how different communities are responding to them. Um, so like I said, a networking event we'll be planning sometime this year, possibly doing a net zero housing tour this fall because we have a new housing project of 80 units that will be coming online in the fall. And it, it has been developed as a net zero project we haven't run any natural gas to the site, so it's all electric heat, and um, it's generating as much electricity as it will be um, using um, through a big solar system for the main part on that. Um, then finally, um, our region, Central Mountain, will once again host the state APA conference in Vail this fall. So looking forward to seeing you all for that. Thank you. Good afternoon, this is Britt Palmberg, one of the two Denver Metro Air representatives, along with uh, Tarek. You want to say hello? Hi, Tarek Wafai, also in Denver. Hi there. So <clears throat> I want to review what we did in 2021. Uh, we had COVID. We were coming out of COVID at that time. We had a couple um, outdoor social events, bike rides around the metro area, one in Arvada, one down in Littleton, to get the juices flowing again and get, getting people to meet in person again here in the Denver Metro to collaborate with other planners. We also began uh, planning for a speaker series coming out of the COVID period, which we're gonna talk about more for 2022. And then we just uh, also had communication with various members around the Metro area, uh, just to get updates about key issues and communicate back to the board where needed. So um, as we head into 2022 here, with COVID even more on the wane, we have quite a bit planned for this next year, and I'll turn it over to Tarek to elaborate more. Thanks, Brett. And when he said we, all the things you accomplished in 2021, I just joined the board in, in January. So kudos to the ex-Denver uh, Metro rep. Um, and Brett and I just learned that we're actually neighbors here. So um, I think he and I will work as a, a nice dynamic duo. We've got a lot of things planned after our initial meeting to set the stage for this year. Um, some of them will continue to do the fun stuff. Uh, we both like to be on our bikes, so we might do some mountain type bicycle riding. Uh, we might do some road biking. We'll put some events together that get our bodies moving, but try to keep a, a planning focus uh, to those events. We'll also just do some social events, meet at a bar, drink a beer, yes, but hopefully bring in some sponsors and by sponsor, I just mean someone who's willing to spend a few minutes talking about their company, talking about what they do, how it relates to planning as a profession, especially here in the front range, um, and give them the opportunity to speak to all of us. We think it'll be a fun way to keep our, our, our members active and engaged. And then also planning a quarterly speaker series. Um, we've outlined five bullet points here. Um, these are just our initial brainstorming of things that are coming up, and we don't think that they're tired topics by any means. Uh, they're up and coming. They've been around for a while, but we want to get into the nuts and bolts of these issues throughout the year. So look forward to specific dates on uh, when we might bring in some speaker panels to discuss these issues. And as always, if you have additional things that you'd like to cover, additional ideas for how we can better represent the metro area, um, send us an email where you can be reached at denvermetro at apacolorado.org and looking forward to serving.
All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Leslie. I'm um, fresh on the job like Tarek, so I don't have a lot of accomplishments to report for the North Central area, but I am honored to be the new representative for the nine great counties that you see listed here in the northeast part of the state. Um, hopefully you will reach out and get acquainted. Here's the email to connect um, with me. And uh, the goals for 2022 are um, somewhat modest this year, I would say. Um, first of all, I would encourage and, and ask everybody to help our colleagues in Boulder County who are affected by the fire. Our, our hearts go out to them. And there is a matching contribution fund that's set up through APA um, with nine days left to contribute to that. Um, I think the main goals, um, some of what you heard Britt and Tarek just report about finding great ways to connect um, over the next year, um, connect over topics that we care about and have some fun together, find ways to meet in person, do some uh, fun things. Uh, we'd love to meet up with our colleagues in adjacent areas too. Um, so I would encourage you, please reach out and let me know about the topics that are of interest to you in this area. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to collaborate with our other area reps. Um, if you can go to the next slide, I'll just do a, a quick bit about me since I'm brand new and um, I have lived and worked in the Northeast area for about 20 years and I've been a planner for about 30 years. Um, currently the director for Larimer County Community Development Department and that includes planning, building and code compliance. Um, we're doing a lot of work around updating our land use code, our building code, a lot of housing topics, wildfire recovery, water planning, short-term rentals, climate planning, agriculture, um, you name it, it seems like it's on the list these days. Um, we're also busy like everybody else up and down the front range and in, in, in the mountains. Um, and I've worked in the private and public sector and have been on several uh, committees in APA, currently in the professional development committee and have served on other boards and commissions in my community. So I'm really excited to work with you and to work with this board and the rest of the membership and welcome new folks to APA. Um, please reach out. Thank you. Hi, all. This is Ethan Mobley, Northwest representative. I was newly elected this year as well, um, along with Leslie. I represent a uh, pretty significantly large area on the western slope, Moffitt, Rio Blanco, Garfield County, Mesa, Delta, Montrose, Uray, Gunnison. So we have a, quite a bit of different types of towns and cities across um, the, the, the region, from ski towns to, to ranch and cattle towns. Um, so I'm really excited to represent the, the 96 members. Um, and uh, 16 towns and cities that are representing some of those memberships across the region. Um, we have 38 AIC professionals and um, th over 30 public agencies um, within the, the membership um, listing and also uh, 10 private firms. Uh, and I'm one of those private firms. I'm, a, I'm a, the owner of Dynamic Planning Plus Science and I have um, about 20 years of experience doing planning work for a number of different uh, public and private agencies. And I'm really happy to bring that experience uh, to the Northwest region. Um, I was elected again and in, in, um, I'm newly elected, but I was the Northwest representative um, through 2018 through 2020. Um, I did attend the, the Colorado State Planning Conference in Keystone. I'd love to meet up with all you guys um, over the years, over the next year, but um, uh, for 2022, um, I would like to do a lunch and learn, and we we're planning to do that in April and Delta um, to increase new members, but also um, provide some educational opportunities. May not be a uh, the you know, a continued education certified yet, but what I wanted to do is uh, showcase a project in Delta and Delta's downtown on the main street there. They closed off some of the lanes and provided um, parking and and uh, better walkability for the city. So I wanted to showcase that. So that, that invite will be coming out soon. Um, and then also developing some digital meeting space opportunities to do lunch and learn. So, you know, the typical Zoom stuff, but maybe we can cheers with a beer um, and make sure that we can make it fun as well. And I'll also be looking to obtain CM credits 
for those uh, digital meetings in the future. So you can always contact me, um, Ethan Mobley again, uh, and the contact information is on the page. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, I am Sarah Colas. I am the student um, student president this year for APA Colorado. Um, nice to see you all here today. Um, and Lauren Platman is also here, the student representative for APA Colorado. We had an unusual year, of course, everyone has on this call. Um, just looking back on a few of our events um, this past year, we were really happy to have the APA conference in person again. We had 34 students travel to Keystone to attend the conference um, and attend all the panels and networking events. And it was a really enriching experience um, for us as students to come together after a year of being online for our classes and also really great to network with professionals across the state. We also had um, a few events too um, from the last board um, in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion. They had a few panel events. They were recorded as well, so I'm happy to drop those links in the chat. Um, they were centered around accessibility and planning, feminism and planning, and also black spaces and planning. So I'm happy to um, drop those recordings. They're definitely worth the watch and the rewatch. They're very informative, um, and they also include professionals from across Colorado and nationally. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Um, so I'm Lauren Platman, as Sarah said, and I'm the student representative for the student chapter at CU Denver. So for the spring of 2022, uh, the student board is focused on sort of three key initiatives, um, professional development, using Denver as our classroom, and then networking. Um, so in terms of professional development, we're planning on hosting um, workshops on AICP certification. Um, as a way to inform students about the process and some of the benefits as they transition into their planning careers. Um, and we'll also be supporting the MRF Alumni Association with their MRF Connect events, which are focused on connecting students in small groups with planning professionals. Um, on April 27th, um, the chapter is hosting a Stream Academy uh, or Stream Management Academy workshop. And this is in partnership with the Ma High Flood District the APA Sustainability Committee. And then thanks to you all, it's sponsored by APA Colorado, uh, Valerian and Stream. And the workshop is designed to introduce planners to the Mile High Flood District Stream Management Academy program, which is about a nine month program. Um, and the goal is really to teach planners, engineers, landscape architectures, sort of the key watershed and stream functions um, and processes and how to integrate sort of runoff practices and high functioning low maintenance stream design into land use, um, land use decisions as well as planning and design. Um, and so uh, you will all be invited. Um, this will be sort of an introduction to what that nine month long course actually looks like um, and should be interactive and just a good way to meet people. And if you love um, stream and ecology, a good way to be introduced to those concepts. And then finally, um, our chapter is partnered with the WTS student chapter, um, and we're hosting um, various uh, tours of planning firms and agencies this spring. Um, this is really an opportunity for students to learn about all the planning opportunities that exist in the Denver region. Um, so if you're interested in participating, um, we would love to have you and feature you and you can talk, contact Sarah or myself. And then I, lastly, I do wanna mention that in April, we will be um, working with the faculty to host a town hall to get feedback about the MERC program at CU Denver. And then we'll be holding elections for the next round of officers for the 2022 and 2023 academic year. So I think that's all. Thank you so much. Um, as the awards committee co-chair. Um, I work closely with Daniel Murray of Wapata County. Um, and we have um, eight awards categories. Um, in 2021, we had seven, 17 applications. Um, 
2020, we had 18, so very close to what we had previously. Um, our review committee, um, which is made up of typically about eight people, um, we awarded three merit awards and five honor awards. And we had a new award in 2021, which was our Water Smart Award. Um, and that was in partnership with the um, Sonoran Institute. So thank you for that um, new award, which is great. Um, and we again acknowledge those award winners um, at, in person at our annual conference, but then again in video, they all did a video and um, we pushed that out via social media to, to get some additional viewership on that and, and to give them some additional press, which was great and um, appreciated. So we'll look to continue that again in the next year. In 2022, we are starting our process again um, already. So um, this month we are um, opening the nominations. So look for that and please apply if you have a great project or you know of one, encourage people to apply. Um, we'll be closing that nomination period in March. The committee will meet in April. That's when we go through um, all the nominations and the categories um, and we will do a few few hours, more than a few hours of reviewing and um, work on that. So if you're interested in participating, we'd love to have more members looking at um, these award nominations. It's, it's very interesting to see everybody's um, amazing projects and be able to discuss that with your peers. So please contact us at the email here on the screen if you can. Um, and we present those recommendations from the committee to the board in May and inform um, our award winners. And then in October, of course, this year in Vail, we'll be recognizing um, our award winners at the, at the state conference. So thank you so much. And um, again, if you're interested in participating, joining the committee to review every um, submittal, we would love to have you. Um, please reach out. Thank you. Hi. So uh, my name is Jennifer Woods. I am nominee, but I am um, presenting for him as well. Um, he's working hard at work. So right now, our current focus in the Equity, uh, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee has been on one objective, and that's to understand the statistics of the profession, gender distribution, ethnicity, racial, pay scale, title level, satisfaction within the profession, and mentorship. Um, we've really been focused on the survey itself that we put out this last year um, and analyzing the results of that survey. So we're going to put all of that into a report. Um, we do meet monthly to really kind of digest some of the, the um, outcomes of what we found in the report thus far. Um, Manisha is constantly kind of reassessing the information and analyzing for new data and new um, some relationships, so to speak. Um, our meeting is the first Tuesday of every month. So if you want to get on board, we're happy to send you that, um, that link and you can come to our meetings. Um, and again, Manisha and I are the current co-chairs for that committee. So last year we did the survey, you're hearing about the survey. The survey was actually a really excellent resource. What we're doing now, so that was all of our 2021 um, because surveys are great to do in the middle of a pandemic. Um, the, uh, the goals that we have for this year are to basically digest the information that we've got from the survey and then try and figure out a few things, a few focus things that we can do um, to, to try and either mitigate, um, change, or um, highlight the issues that we found. Um, a lot of that's going to include outreach and uh, look, talking to those communities that are most impacted by the EDI issues that we have assessed to this point. So bias in the workplace. This is where all the data and statistics and, and spell check doesn't work with CAPS apparently. Um, but this is where all of the, the data comes in to play. Um, I'm going to take a high level uh, view of this and say basically everybody saw some level of bias in the workplace, whether, the, whether they witnessed it themselves or actually felt it were the, were the direct, um, uh, you know, kind of the victim of, of that. 
Um, and it is a very worrying finding when you actually look at people of color or females in the workplace, they experienced it way more. And that really isn't surprising, but um, the fact that it is in Leyden, there is something that we as planners should definitely take into account in kind of everyday business and hiring and everything that we do, um, because this is actually a very big deal. Um, in addition, we can kind of move on to the next slide. Um, EDI and planning in general, um, we were curious to see how EDI functioned um, within the planning uh, profession. And, you know, unfortunately, people who were in the minority group and women, people of color, did not feel confident that the profession has the tools to address their concerns. And so if we're going to look anywhere on, on solutions, I think the first place to start is um, where do we start? How do we start to address these concerns? Um, and when it comes to understanding you know, what, what, what that means in our workplace, really where that, that fell was upper management. Um, leadership had a lot to do with culture and with the way that the workplace felt and, and treated uh, people of color and um, females as well. And so uh, these are really the, the guiding um, principles when, when we're looking at engagement in our practice itself. And the next one, this, this is a, a, you know, we've all seen these, we've done these ourselves. The, the two biggest pieces that come out of this when it comes to, you know, how is leadership involved in EDI and how can it influence EDI? What we really saw in terms of our analysis and the open-ended responses, which much of the concern around EDI um, was within the leadership within organizations. And I think that has a lot to do with basically, you know, kind of doing the practice, what you preach, seeing leadership push down and the importance of EDI um, and different ways that you can do that was, was one of the things that was seen as being meaningful and maybe lacking in our current um, situation. So um, there were a lot of different ways that we could assess and, and try and bring it webinars, trainings, workshops, case studies, um, you, know, uh, you know, best practices, all of these things come about as we start to dig into these issues a little more. And I think that's what you're going to see come out of this committee eventually is some recommendations on best practices and, and the best ways that we can do that. That's how we've been talking about this as a committee, um, something that people can walk away with and that can help them get to the place they want to be at with EDI. Um, but that's what we're working to now. And we're just analyzing the data, trying to figure out exactly what the uh, facets are that we need to focus on. I have a lot of slides here. We'll go through them quickly. The first three are pretty much redundant. So go ahead and change. Um, so the FAICP nomination committee is um, drawn from the chapter's active FAICP membership, which is 12 in the state. And the cycle for nomination to FAICP of the College of AICP College of Fellows, which is what this means, is uh, a two year cycle. And uh, I've served on two of the nomination committees um, for 2020 and 2022. Um, for 2020, um, we uh, sent out, the chapter administrator sent out invitations to all eligible APA uh, Colorado chapter members. And to be eligible, you have to have been certified AICP for 15 years. And they were invited to submit nominations. The nomination committee was drawn from, um, like I said, the chapter member fellows. Um, it's voluntary. And uh, then uh, that group reviews the nominations and um, selects those that the chapter will support. And then uh, a smaller number of volunteers to mentor the candidates to help them prepare their nomination. So we had four that we supported this year and four uh, mentors and the rest of the committee helped them uh, review um, the draft nominations before submission. Next slide. So when this happened, it was in December, 2020 when we did the invitations and um, then we worked um, from that time through um, uh, May basically to put together um, the mentors work with the um, nominees to develop their application packages and then the review happened and um, they were submitted in August 2021. And we should know this month who were successful nominees in the past cycle. We had one out of four 
and in the previous cycle before that, two out of four. We've been running on that four cycle. So we'll see um, this month who was successful and they'll be inducted into the College of uh, Fellows at the conference, um, um, NCP 2022. Next slide. Uh, this just shows the schedule for the current cycle that I was talking about with the December, December to August, and then February notifications. And next slide. So um, we found um, both this year and this previous cycle that I worked on it that there's um, a lot of um, variation in what's submitted to the candidates, which makes selection difficult. Um, and that the mentors have to, it's, it's really a lot of work and the applicants need to understand um, the level of effort required. So um, we're gonna standardize the application process so we get the uh, same information um, to support fair selection. And then we're also gonna try to put together a library to help nominees to understand kind of a how-to materials to support them um, as they prepare their nomination packages. Next slide. So um, we got it all done um, this past cycle. The next cycle, for those that are interested, will begin with uh, <clears throat> solicitation of applicants in December 2023. And then um, a normal cycle would go through September with a submittal and again, notification in, in February. So that's kind of the long and the short of it. Hello, uh, my name is Renee Stavros. I am the current chair of the Great Places Committee program. Um, uh, the Great Places program started in 2019 as a program to highlight places that represent the gold standard in terms of having a true sense of place, cultural and historic interest, community involvement, and a vision for the future. Um, Applicants submit their projects based on three categories, a uh, great neighborhood, a great street, or a great public space. Um, they showcase characteristics that make their nomination great, including a livable built environment, harmony with nature, a resilient economy, and a healthy community. In 2021, we uh, awarded two great places the 39th Avenue Greenway Project in Denver and River Park at Las Colonias in Grand Junction. Um, the 39th Avenue Greenway Project is a one mile long new green space extending across the Coal and Clayton neighborhoods in Denver. It fulfills community desires for increased connections and new amenities while acting as a conveyance for stormwater. It also creates safe bike and pedestrian connections, linking residents to expanded mobility options, including connections to transit facilities. Uh, the River Park at Las Colonias is a 140-acre um, park located between downtown Grand Junction and the banks of the Colorado River. It bridges the gap between the community and the Colorado River and acts as a habitat preservation area for endangered fish. Uh, it's a truly unique space that was built for all users. Um, these are two great projects. We've um, awarded great projects every year since 2019. And um, as a committee, uh, you can go to the next slide. Um, we're hoping in 2022 to find new ways to interact with our committee members and jumpstart some additional um, interest in the program. Last year, we had some reflections on marketing and this year we're looking for ways to increase marketing of the program by creating a marketing campaign or something similar. Um, new members are always welcome and encouraged Anyone who has ideas for reaching more people and encouraging participation in the committee and marketing of the program to get new and more applicants is greatly appreciated. That's all. Thank you.
Good afternoon. My name is Roshana Floyd. I am the co-chair for the APA Colorado Healthy Communities Committee. Uh, my co-chair, Liz young Winnie, is unable to join us this afternoon, so I will be providing a brief overview of where we have been and where we are going in 2022. Um, like several of the other board members on today, I really cannot take much credit for what has occurred in the past year. Um, that goes very much to Liz and to our outgoing co-chair, Braden Nicholson. But with that, I will give a brief overview of 2021. Uh, we focused on four primary areas for 2021. Um, one was policy. We had the board adopt or rather approve the health and housing position statement and our updated committee mission statement. Um, our goal for this committee is really to bring not just planning professionals together, but also professionals who are in the field of public health um, to do good work making communities healthier and stronger and more resilient throughout the state of Colorado. Um, with that updated statement, we also moved into education a little bit in 2021, and the committee hosted a workshop at APA Colorado's annual conference, uh, Healthy Communities Planning, a Community Cafe Conversation on Post-COVID Planning and Health. Um, certainly a, a topic that uh, continues to be relevant today, um, and, and we hope that that will be a topic that maybe um, gets a, a little less sound time as we move forward. We also focus a lot on resources for our committee, ensuring that our committee members have access to um, resources that will really strengthen the work that they do, um, hopefully help with some of the heavy lifting. That's one of our goals for the committee. So in 2021, we completed phase 1A of the Colorado Code Project, which is a statewide model land use code toolkit. Um, that project was a capstone project as well with one of the MERP students. So last year we worked with Hannah Groves. We had a lot of fantastic collaboration and just cannot uh, thank Hannah enough for the work that she completed for us. Um, as we move into 2022, we are continuing that project and we have a new student with us, Ayana Reed, um, who is already doing fantastic work for us. So we are very, very thankful for that program. Um, and a lot of the work that we do with our committee could not be accomplished without the exceptional work of these students. And then networking. Um, that really is one of the values of our committee as well. Again, we are trying to assist people in forming partnerships and relationships and doing some cross collaboration, innovation and problem solving. So in 2021, we held seven committee meetings and we offered three speaker presentations to members across a wide variety of disciplines and regions. And if I may have the next slide, please, I'll talk a little bit about the goals for 2022 for our committee. Um, so again, resources, as I noted, we will be moving into phase 1B of the Colorado Code Project um, with Ayana's uh, leadership and support on that. We will continue to focus on education and supporting our members in submitting and or presenting sessions for the 2022 annual APA Colorado Conference. Networking remains a large component and focus of our committee. Um, again, really helping people make those additional ties throughout the state of Colorado and even beyond. Um, this year, our goal is to coordinate at least one joint committee meeting with another APA Colorado committee to increase that collaboration. Uh, right now, we are in conversations with both the Sustainability Committee and the Legislative Committee. So we look really forward to bringing some um, joint meetings um, to our membership in this year. Uh, we also strive to increase membership and to provide some flexible opportunities for our members to participate in community projects um, for the committee. So either locally or even regionally across the state. And then strategic thinking. Um, we really now are to a point with our committee where we have a solid membership base. Um, we are currently small, but we are mighty. And we want to expand that and really start thinking about a five-year strategic plan for the Healthy Communities Committee. Um, so we can talk about the Colorado Code Project, where that's going, and then how we can maximize that resource, add on to that, 
um, and really kind of expand our scope um, and work in, in more alignment with the other committees to further the goals and mission of the board itself. And with that, thank you. Um, I'm gonna put our email in the chat here. If anybody is interested in sitting in on one of our meetings or hearing more about what we do, please come join us. Okay. So this is, our, this is one of the committees where we need some volunteers. Um, I'm the current chair, although Susan Wood has agreed to take over. Um, and Sheila is, is a standing member of the membership committee. And um, I believe Michelle Stevens is also leading the committee. So we need numbers. Um, in 2021, uh, we initiated development of a welcome packet for new members, but we postponed a member survey due to um, priorities to the EDI survey that you've heard about. Um, the goal of the survey was to try to um, find out ways that we can maybe get more employer support for chapter membership. We think that that may be an issue that we've had. And um, we also want to complete and distribute the welcome pack packet, uh, connect chapter members with PDO and promote AICP certification and just do more to make uh, membership more attractive. Next slide. So this is what we have faced. Um, you see, in 20, if we look at 2018 as a benchmark, we were hit, we believe, because of COVID, a uh, drop in membership through 2020, and we're picking up um, almost to 2018 levels now. Next slide. And um, this is kind of interesting to see the, um, the breakup of the membership. Um, so we see that many of the categories are fairly stable and that um, happily AICP um, certification of certified members are increasing. Um, next slide. And by geographic area. And this is one where I think because I uh, had formerly been South uh, Central Area representative, if you look at the population of the South Central region and it has the second largest city, um, you know, we're way down there in terms of the number of members. And so we believe that perhaps that was that um, the employers were not supporting it. So next slide. Okay. All right. So the Outreach and Communications Committee, I'm Mike Toka and I'm joined by Julia. So moving into 2021 in review, kind of a rebuilding year, we were starting to work on new methods after we were hit with COVID. Uh, we discussed a few of those earlier, but one we didn't was possibly looking for ways to utilize our YouTube channel a bit more as well. Uh, and then also we've been utilizing social media throughout the year and look forward to continuing that. And that can't be done without Jenna Skinner, our social media coordinator. We, we couldn't do this uh, without her. And the most recent communications you saw from us, uh, from the committee was working on uh, the Marshall Fire response, uh, which was partnered with a lot of other committee members uh, and chapter members on here as well. So uh, looking at our action plan for 2022, it's to assist in the transition with the new website, work on implementing our, strategic, our chapter strategic communications plan, and then further ways to promote and show value. Uh, and perhaps that's other social media uh, blast communication. So we're always looking for new ideas. And a lot of our past year was looking forward when we were discussing those. And this year, we're looking forward to launching those. And I'll turn it over to Jenna or Julia, if there's anything to add. <laughs> Since Julia's not moving, I'll, I'll pipe in. Hi, my name is Jenna. I'm a social media person. Um, for all those who don't know me, um, I do have a direct email. If anyone wants to send me anything directly, they may do so at social at apacolorado.org. Um, I'm always around um, to try to help get things posted or share things. I've recently helped with the Transportation Symposium, for instance, with their graphics um, as part of a, an assistance since we're one of their main sponsors. I also created an event for them. So if you have any questions or you need some help with that, just let me know. Obviously, there's 
a lot more things that we could share if we just if we know about it. And those are a lot of the little articles. Um, unfortunately, I don't have time to constantly sit here and, and scour. So if anyone um, wants to do a nice brag or talk about your successes and you want to share that with the rest of the, the state, let me know and I'd be happy to assist with that. Hi everyone, I'm Erin Fostick and I'm the Professional Development Officer and Chair of the Professional Development Committee. Um, in 2021, we focused a lot on the conference. So thanks to those of you who were able to join us in Keystone for the Planning at a Crossroads Conference. Um, the Professional Development Committee is uh, really to be credited for a lot of the work that I'm, I'm presenting today. And I know there's a number of you on the call. So I just wanna give a shout out and thank you for all the work you do. Um, as we do each year, we created a call for sessions to support our conference theme, reviewed proposals and, and selected what I think was a pretty dynamic um, set of sessions. Um, we provided AICP support to a number of members and Josh referenced that um, through some of his comments on mentorship. We also hosted two virtual prep work sessions um, that helped folks that were taking the test in 2021 um, prepare for that exam. And we also continually assist with certification maintenance uh, for trainings that people are putting on locally in addition to the conference. For 2022, um, the Professional Development Committee is going to be working on a lot of the same things. We're really excited for this year's conference in Vail. Um, it was great to see everyone last year and we're excited to be in person again in Vail. Our theme this year is how we live. There is a call for session that is out right now. I believe that is open through March 14th. So we're really looking for um, inclusive and engaging sessions. I think as Joss mentioned, um, really always looking for different ways we can deliver content. So if you have something that you think is exciting, please go ahead and put in a proposal. Um, new this year too, as many of you know, AICP has some different required um, topic areas. And so in addition to ethics and law, which we've had as requirements for several years, we'll also be looking for conference sessions to fulfill um, ethics and then the rotating topic, which is currently sustainability and resilience. And so if you've done work in any of these areas and you wanna share it, we would really love to add you to our conference lineup. Um, also a call for folks that are interested in helping select conference sessions, um, please reach out to us. You can reach me at PDO at APA Colorado, and I will put that in the chat as well. Um, but we love to have a variety of perspectives that help us review conference session proposals. And that way we're, we ensure that we have something for everyone. We'll continue to support planners that are sitting for the AICP exam, both this spring and in the fall. Um, we've been having great success delivering these workshops virtually, and so we'll probably continue with that, at least for the time being. Um, we are preparing to offer a workshop in March. So if you're going to be sitting for the exam um, later this spring, keep your eye out for that. We continue to identify ways to assist members to earn their AICP credits. And as I mentioned, with the new required topic areas, we'll be looking for additional thoughts and, and hopefully working with some of the area reps um, to provide some training for folks um, so that they can get their credits. And just a shout out, if any of you need credits, um, you have until May to complete your required credits. So um, I'll be sending out some additional information, but if you need ideas on where you can get credits, feel free to contact me at any time. And then obviously um, from a professional development perspective, as the PDO, and certainly I'll speak for the committee in general, we are here for you. Um, if you need us to help review cover letters and resumes, if you have questions for us, if you have ideas for delivering um, training that could get CM credits, um, we'd love to hear from you. And then one of the other things that we'll be working on this year that we're um, really excited about is hopefully to set up and launch an expert and speaker database. And so we'll be um, contacting many of you. We know that there's a lot of expertise within our membership and we want to be able to provide support for um, testifying, for doing presentations, delivering content, um, potentially connecting folks if they have questions. And so we're, we're just in the beginning stages of starting to think about that, um, but expect some additional information and we'd love to have your, your feedback and your support with that. Thanks so much. 
Oh, and last but not least, um, also want to take this opportunity to congratulate the uh, folks that passed the exam in November of 2021. We were able to congratulate the folks that passed in the spring at the conference. And so these are the Colorado members that uh, successfully passed the exam. If they have uh, already submitted all their other required documentation, they can start using their AICP credential. Otherwise, they can use the candidate designation until they submit that. So really proud of all the folks on this list. I know it's a lot of hard work and um, take a moment to pat yourself on the back and we'll all give you a virtual round of applause for your um, continued efforts. So welcome to AICP. So I do not see either Carl or Dana on the call today. I just wanna to double check and see if I've missed them. If not, I'll go ahead and um, go over the Sustainability Committee's 2020 One Year in Review. So they've actually had um, a number of events. I think some folks might have attended the Designing a Street for Recovery event, which I think was actually a, a cool event. I believe it was recorded and that we could pass that along. Um, and then they also had a happy hour um, as well. And as you can see, they had a number of events um, that they continued to they did last year and are looking to do next year. We've also talked um, this year about doing the symposium for sustainable infrastructure. And um, Sheila, myself, um, Michelle and Carl have met to talk about what that might take to put together a symposium um, similar to the transportation symposium, but a, a different um, format perhaps than that one. Um, so tentatively that's in the spring and partnering with ACSE and APWA. And if you have any questions for the Sustainability Committee or you have the bandwidth to join them, they could use some additional support, um, please feel free to email sustainability at apacolorado.org. Right, and then we have a couple of groups that um, uh, emerging planning professionals, and I know that they're getting back on board shortly and have been corresponding with both Sheila and I to get their committee and um, their folks um, back on the board, which we'll be doing at the March meeting, and then Youth in Planning is the other committee that was not represented yet here today. As always, I want to thank our sponsors, our partners, all the folks who help us do what we do, and um, help us support us not just at the conference, but in our website and a lot of the uh, events that we put on as Tarek talked about earlier, getting some of them to come out and speak and sponsor is a great way to support APA Colorado. So I wanna take this moment just to thank everybody. Um, special thanks to all the board members. Sheila and I really appreciate that you were all able to make it today and that you were able to get um, some information to us in time for today's meeting. We do have one item on the agenda that actually does require action today, which is um, the adoption of the 2021 annual report. I know that we have been looking at the annual report um, over the past couple of meetings, and I'm hoping today that we could get a motion to approve and a vote on the annual report so we can send that up to APA National. Is there anyone willing to? Motion to approve. All right, I think I have, thank you, Mark, I believe. Do I have a second? A second, this is Shada. Thank you, Shada. Um, moved and seconded, um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Perfect. Thank you, everybody, I really appreciate that. Um, and with that, I think we can move to adjournment. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved, Josh. To adjourn. Thank you, Josh. Do I have a second. second? Julia. Thank you, Julia. Thanks again, everybody. Really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day.